Welcome to Math with Mrs. Cox. Today we are going to be discussing Chapter 12, Lesson 8, Hands-On, Use Models to Find Volume. It is located on page 949. All right, before you have watched this video, please make sure you have watched Math Antics video from YouTube, The Volume of Prisms. He talks a lot about volume of prisms and, and introduces the subject and makes it a lot more simpler to understand. If you're short on time, you'll need to watch it until the timestamp of about 7 minutes and 13 seconds. Um, once you get to that timestamp, he uh, covers the volume of rectangular prisms. But after that, he dives into cylinders and triangular prisms and their volume. And we don't get into that into fifth grade. That's something you get into sixth grade. So it is interesting to watch. But if you're short on time, at least watch Math Antics until minute marker 713. All right, let's dive into our lesson. Volume is the amount of space inside a three-dimensional figure. Centimeter cubes can help you find the volume of a prism. Use centimeter cubes to build four different rectangular prisms. Complete the fourth and fifth columns of the table below for each prism. So what you're doing, these are the these are the cubes that you're going to build to build. These are the centimeter cubes you're going to use to build the rectangular prisms. So when you're done, this is what you're building. It's like you're stacking blocks or Lego, Lego bricks that are all the same size. And if you watch the Math Antics video, he explained the volume of a prism. Like this is a cardboard box, and inside the cardboard box, it's filled with ice and you're trying to fit, find the volume so, or the amount of the ice that's inside or the surface area which would be like as if this is a box on the outside. And don't worry, it'll make more sense as we go along. So let's dive into this. So prism A, we have one times two times one. So that's saying like we have one with, that's too high. So that we have one that's one high, two across and one deep. So this right here really looks very similar to this. So we can say there are two cubes and the cubic centimeter is two cubic centimeters. Okay, now let's visualize this one. This one has two cubes by two cubes by one cube. So we are going to look like this one. Two cubes by two cubes and then it's one cube deep. So then we're gonna have a visualization of four. I wish they would have done pictures for all of these, but we can visualize them in our head. All right, so this one has three times two times two. So there are three blocks, one, two, three. Then there are, they are two high, one, two. So then we have something kind of like that. Then it we are, says that we are gonna go too deep so there would be one, two. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, then we're gonna go too deep. So it actually would be like that. So if we go too deep, not an art major, but that's okay. It would actually be 12, 12 cubes. Good deal. Let's dive into the next one. 4 times 2 times 2. So we have 4 on the front, and it's going to be 4. So it's like we have 4, this right here, plus another group of 4 behind it. So, plus another, so we will have 16 and 16. Don't worry, once we get into this, it'll make a lot more sense. Just keep following with me, you're doing great. Okay, a prism is built with cu cubes with no gaps or overlaps. Huh, they have a rhyme there. A cube with a side length of one unit is called a unit cube. A unit cube has a volume of one cubic unit or one to the third. A cubic unit is the measure of measuring volume, is a unit for measuring volume. One cubic unit, two cubic unit, four cubic units. So if you are using 12 centimeter blocks to build a rectangular prism, the prism has a volume of, well, how many blocks do we have there, folks? Yep, 12 cubic centimeters or 12 centimeters cubed. And it makes much more sense if you watch the Math Antics video. He explains it a little more entertaining and he has really cool 3D graphics to show, 
show this concept. Okay, let's dive in to this one right here. Okay, use centimeter cubes to build the rectangular prism sh shown. Complete each table for each layer. Um, we are building this thing right here. We have layer one, and so we're just talking about this layer right here. Layer two, layer three, layer four. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, so layer one, we're talking about the length. One, two, three, four. So you're gonna write four cubes. And the width, one, two, three. And we're only going to go one cubic high because that's all there is in layer one where the arrow is pointing. So then we can tell if we have four here, four times three is 12 cubes. So we have a 12 centimeter cube. All right, second layer, pretty similar story. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four times 12 with the length of one, or the height of one is 12. So then we have 12. Again, do you see a pattern here? Okay, let's do this one right here in layer three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. It's one level high, one layer high. Again, we get 12 and 12. And I bet you can't figure out what's going to be on that last line. Yep, you're right. It's going to complete the pattern because it is a cube. So it's all congruent sides. They're all equal. And that layer, all the layers have the same amount. And I like this top layer because you can actually count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. Okay, how many cubes were used to build this prism? This is where you add these all together. One, two, three, four. Four times 12 is 48. Good job. Then you would write it as 48 centimeters cubed. That little three means that we times the length, times the width, times the height to get a three-dimensional object. Okay. Describe the relationship between the number of cubes needed to build a rectangular prism and its volume and its cubic units. Volume is the same as the number of cubes needed to build a rectangular prism. So the volume is, I guess this picture will work really well. The volume is how many of these cubes will need to, are needed to build this. Or if you had a bunch of ice cubes or sugar cubes that you needed to put together, that would be the volume of how many of those sugar cubes you needed to build that prism. Feel free to push pause if you need to be able to copy that down. Okay, number two. Describe the pattern in the table between length, width, height, and the volume of each prism. Product, remember product is a fancy word for the answer to a multiplication problem. Product of the length, width, and height equals the volume of the prism. So, that is just pretty much saying length, times width times height equals the volume of the prism. Okay, number three. Use L for length, W for width, and H for height to write a formula for the volume of the prism. They just want you to pretty much write exactly what they just said. So volume equals length times width times height. Ta-da! Easy peasy. Number four. Use your formula that we just wrote right here to find the volume of the prism to the right in appro appropriate units. Verify your solution by counting the number of cubes. All right, so let's do. So let's just plug in the number. So volume. So here's the length. One, two, three, four. Four. The width. One, two. And the height. We have one, two, three. So four times two is eight. 8 times 3 is 24, and because it is a cube, we need to do cubed. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, there's exactly the same amount right behind here. You just can't see them all, but I can see that there's another layer. So I'm just going to count the same 12 over again. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yep, there are 24 cubes there. We did it right. Nicely done. All right, let's turn to page 951. We are on number five. 
Okay, we are talking about using math tools. Use centimeter cubes to build this rectangular prism. Here's a rectangular prism. Imagine as sugar cubes. We have this layer and this layer. So on the first layer, how many do we have? One, two, three, four. Very good. And the width, how many do we have going up? One, two, three, four. Now, if we remember from Math Antics video, he said that a lot of different teachers use these words and they kind of change which direction they go. So as long as you realize it's talking about one way, going another way, and then going up to build a three-dimensional object, it's okay. Um, you can use interchange width and length easily. All right, the height is two. So then we have four times four. Oh, I almost made a mistake here. We only want the first layer. So the first layer just has one. Four times four is 16 times one is 16. Okay, second layer, again we have four, one, two, three, four, and then we have one, two, three, four, and there's only one layer on that, 16. So we have 16 and 16, and when we add that together, we know that there are 32 cubes, or we could say that is 32 centimeters cubed. Okay. Use centimeter blocks to build the rectangular prism below. Again, they're having us count these different layers, how many blocks are in each of these layers. You can kind of look at this first one, or layer four, and count how many there are if you're slightly confused, and then just make sure you do that on the same on all the layers right there. So we can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six in, in the length. Count up, one, two, three. Three going up. And there's one cubic on that first layer. So six times three is 18. Yep, and you bet you can just continue that pattern right there because it is a rectangular prism. Good job. Now, one, two, three, four. Four times 17 is 72 cubes. And we know it has 72 centimeters cubed is our answer. Okay, great. Let's turn to 952. Number nine. What shape is the base of the prism? Remember, the base is like the first layer. So let's talk about that first layer. Or if it's easier to look right here, what is that shape? You're right. Nicely done. It is a rectangle. Rectangle. All right, number 10. Explain to your friend how to find the area of the base of the prism. So if we were to find the area of this base, what do we do? We multiply the length times the width. So we would multiply, we would multiply length times the width to find the base. The area of the base. Whoops, there we go. Area of the base. And that's how you would explain it to a friend. Okay, number 11. Find the volume of the prism by multiplying the area of the base by its height. Very, very your solution by counting the number of centimeter cubes. Okay, so what we have is we have, they want us to find the volume of the prism. So volume is length times width times height. All right, let's plug in these numbers. <clears throat> Okay, so the length is one, two, three, four, five. Volume would be five <clears throat> times the width, one, two, three. Now the height, we go up one, two, three cubes. All right, so then we have five times three is 15. Then we do 15 times three. Forty-five centimeters cubed. Always circle your answer so it's easy for me to find. Thank you. Number twelve. Valerie knows that the volume of a prism is thirty-six cubic units. She knows that the length of the prism is four units and the width is three units. What is the height? Okay, so we just take this formula right here and we fill in what we know. She knows that the length, the length right there, is 
four. So we'll do four, and the width is three. And then we need to find this one right here, because the, and then the answer is 36. So we know we have a multiplication, multiplication, and then we have an answer. So what is the opposite of multiplication? You're right, division. So we have four times three is 12, but we're missing this number right here. But we have an answer. So what we can do is the opposite. We can take 36 divided by 12 equals what? Yes, you're right, equals three. So let's see if this is a true statement. Four times three is 12. 12 times three is 36. Yep, that is correct. So the answer we're looking for is three units. That will finish our formula. All right, number 13, describe a way to find the volume of a rectangular prism without using models. I can multiply the length, width, and height. I can also multiply the area, the base, and then the height. Pretty much saying this, volume equals length times width times height. Ta-da! Good job. Go ahead and um, send me a short video of you flipping through these pages so I can see that you followed along on this guided practice. Then move to your Lesson 8 Hands-On Models to Find Volume on page 953. You'll find that next video waiting for you on your daily agenda. Thank you.